Hey guys, I'm Dusty Harris. And I'm Kayla Platt. And we are from Amazing Race, season 33. And this is Pit Stop Podcast. Hey guys, I am Kayla Platt from the Purple Team. This is Dusty Harris from Team Gray. And this is Pit Stop Podcast. So, oh, yeah. Dusty, yeah, I'm excited. Finally, here we go. <laughs> I kind of want you to just tell everyone what you can or what they can expect from our podcast specifically, because obviously there's a bunch of recaps out there. Um, so yeah, what can what can people expect from Pit Stop Podcast? Well, guys, first I want to say that I think both of us are very excited to do this. You're going to learn here real soon why we're doing this, but what you can expect from us. And again, there are multiple podcasts out there recapping what we're doing. To me, guys, there's a lot of lettuce, tomato, bread in the podcast that we're seeing out recapping our episodes of what's going on. And so we really want to be the meat and the goods and the sandwich for you. We want to put you in our shoes and try to make it an experience to where you are running the race, experiencing what we are experiencing, how we're messing up, how we're succeeding, and really the ins and outs of what the amazing race truly is. And I honestly don't believe there's two better people to join forces to do that than Kayla and I. And speaking of two people joining forces, uh, let's just address the obvious. Uh, no, we're not dating. You're an absolute lunatic. I love you as a friend, but your wife, Ashley, badass. Um, but no. Definitely hit um, my legs. <laughs> for sure. But um, no, we are kind of the average Joes of the season, you could say. Um, just to touch base on the other teams, I mean, you guys see watching this first episode, what an incredible cast CBS put together. Um, I mean, you have the YouTube, like, sensations. We have the Ellen and Oprah, like, viral teams, um, you know, and then there's just me and you. I mean, yeah, we're the rice <laughs> of the dish here, the base. <laughs> I mean, and ultimately, again, it's, yeah, it's just me and you, but our partners asked us to do this with them and thank God that they did, or we would not be sitting in this amazing position. So uh, they'd probably you know, already be out by now too without us. Yeah. And I mean, and obviously the, the, right. I mean, come on, my back's, my back's tired. I'm just kidding. Right. Just kidding, Raquel. Um, we love you, but Ryan. no, <laughs> but no, I mean, I think in, in, in a perfect world, all four of us would do this together because we just, we had such great energy with you guys as a team, um, you know, running this race, but our partners are kind of just doing bigger shit with their lives. Uh, we have Ryan who has a new podcast out. You can check it out on Instagram or Spotify prison counts. Um, it's amazing I mean, stuff. It's amazing guys. He's really just kind of bringing light and humanizing people who have been in a similar situation as him. So if you haven't already, definitely check out prison counts. Um, but as well, Raquel, she, um, actually is a life coach. Now her website is live the Raquel Um, I can't tell you how much this woman brought me down to earth from so many um, emotional and mental breakdowns on this race because it is so easy for you couch potatoes out there. I used to be one of them being a fan from the show and watching this and be like, oh my God, I can't believe they did that or that looks so easy. Guys, this was the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. I will have to second you on that. Uh, tying your shoes with a camera in your face and a sound guy chasing you, it turns it from a one to a 25, I assure you. I mean, just, yeah. So uh, again, I, I, I would love for them to be sitting here doing this with us, but again, you know, they asked us, so we're going to ride their coattails a little bit. Uh, so yeah, Ryan or Dusty, I'm sorry. I confused you guys like from day one, but here we are. You're so. flattering me. Goodness gracious. <laughs> but no, I want to know, and I'm sure everyone else kind of wants to know too, like, how did he ask you? Like, how are you Ryan's partner? So that is a great question. And as people are starting to experience season 33, you realize that there are some amazing backstories that a lot of the cast have. Again, Kayla and I were the lame ducks sitting on the outside looking in. That's a different story. Um, so Ryan, if you don't know his story, he was wrongfully convicted of a crime in our hometown of Columbia, Missouri, where he did 10 years, again, wrongfully convicted for the murder of the sports editor of our local newspaper, uh, and so 
If you have the opportunity to really learn about Ryan's story, I strongly suggest everyone out there take a second, go on Netflix and watch his documentary, Dream Killer. It is truly a mind-blowing story about a father, his father, Bill Ferguson, doing everything under the sun to get his son, who was wrongfully convicted, out of prison. And it is truly just an amazing story and a tear-jerking thing to watch. And it'll really humanize Ryan for you guys. But back to the topic on how I was asked. So... Bill, I believe, if you want to know the true story, um, his father would have been the first option, no question. And I probably would have had it no other way, though I am very blessed I got to go. Um, his dad had, I believe, a hip surgery, so he really couldn't compete in the race. And so luckily, I was asked. And uh, when he presented it to me, I really didn't believe him. I was completely caught off guard. It was an early phone call. And he's telling me he has this opportunity, and if I could take 30 days off work to go basically run around the world on a television show on CBS. And so, first, I'll be honest with you, I thought he was lying. I mean, who in their right mind would just call you in the morning and ask you if you can go run around on television? But when it all became fruition and we got the opportunity to cast, I mean, it was just truly a mind-blowing opportunity. But the main thing it presented for Ryan and I, especially important to me, was to make up for those last 10 years, you know, 19 to 29, I'm a year older than Ryan. We didn't get to experience everything that a lot of younger friends do getting to the age to travel before you start families, a career. And so the amazing race afforded us the opportunity to make up that lost time. And it's one of the most amazing phone calls, probably second to my wife telling me we we're having a child that I've ever experienced. And so I love you, buddy. Thank you for bringing me. I hope I was a good choice, but Bill, I love you. You are a true superhero. And you two would have been a deadly combination. You guys would have been in real big trouble if you showed up. <laughs> so what about Bill? you? I, I know Raquel kind of asked you as well. And, uh, you know, I, I've heard bits and pieces of the story. Really, let's get, get into it. How were you asked? So uh, Raquel and I, were obviously, we're flight attendants, as you saw or see. Um, we actually used to live together in New York. Um now on a flight attendant salary and living in New York, we literally lived in a shoebox. There were five girls, uh, three bedrooms. We called it Kitty Palace. Uh, so we were just scurrying around New York at odd times of the day and night. Um, but we we had a bunch of girls over to watch The Bachelorette, just typical typical thing for us to do. Um, but we would, you know, we were like, oh, would you ever be on that? Or would you ever apply? You know, if you saw a guy that you liked and, you know, if you said no, everyone wanted to be like, well, well, what show would you be on? They're like, what reality thing would you do? I was like, God, no, I could never do The Bachelorette. You see Naked how much wine afraid. they pump into them? <laughs> Naked and afraid. God, I couldn't do that either. But no. So I had just said like, no, I, I wouldn't do that. But I, I was like, if I could do anything, I would do the amazing race. I'm like, I've watched that since I was in middle school. You get to travel. I'm like, you win a million dollars. I was like, God, like that would be so sick. And thank God I said that because I'm not kidding. Two weeks later, she calls me and she's like, Hey, wasn't it you that said that you, you wanted to be on the amazing race? And I was like, yeah, she goes, okay, well, yeah. Like you want to do it? Yeah, Raquel. Okay, let's just go do it. I'm like, no, dude. There's like an application process. We got an interview. Like, I'm sure a million people try and do that. She's like, no, no, no. Like, like, do you want to do this with me? Like, this is happening. And I was like, no freaking way. So yeah, dude, we went to LA and did it. Just like steamrolled from there. But I literally was like, everyone always says, like, what if you didn't say that? I was like, yeah, what if no I would not be Team Purple? Like, bless you, Raquel. I I hope I made you proud. I hope we had fun at the very least, you know. But no, dude, like she literally just asked me and it was just like impeccable timing. I'm very, very lucky. Very lucky. So Well, that's amazing. Uh, and I'm glad that she asked you so we got the opportunity to meet each other as well. So know. you know, you guys run one hell of a race, you're strong competitors. I think you balance each other out very well. Um in my honest opinion, I talk about it all the time. You guys are a female version of us in a lot of ways, in my opinion. So it was a pleasure <laughs> racing with you. And she, Raquel, you picked well. You got a good one here. Woo. But, um, but no, I mean, yeah, I guess that's, that's really the backstory of, again, you know, why Dusty and I are kind of doing this together, how we got into this amazing position. Uh, but I say we just kind of dive right in. Um, on this episode of Pit Stop Podcast, we are going to talk about um, leg one and leg two collectively, because that was obviously the premiere. It was two hours long in one episode. Um, so yeah, I kind of want to just like dive in. Um, we're lined up. Right. And we're about to sprint to these taxis. Phil's about to say go. 
w- like what is going through your mind like when he says go when we're about to start this this shindig for real so when you watch the episode you just kind of see us run around a corner uh realistically what's happened prior to that we'll get into it in a second so standing there you're looking left, you're looking right. I mean, this is it. Everything you've waited for. You know, we know months in advance that this is going to happen. And here we are in London. I'm looking left. Mo just chirps constantly. Him and Mike banter. But just the sheer size of Mike alone let me know that, okay, physically, Ryan, we're second fiddle to that duo. Then you see the twins who are literally finishing each other's sentences. They're matching. It's it's very intimidating. And so I'm like, Ryan, are we as in sync as them? We thought we were. Maybe not. And just you keep going down the line. Then there's I'm star studded, caught in Penn's gaze. You have beautiful Penn and Kim, the YouTube sensations. And so you know they've been around the block. Both of them have so many experiences. Just going to talk with them a little bit. And the cast in general all have overcome or done amazing things. And so you realize, you know, just a physical gift here or there, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter because everyone seemed to be the complete package. And so I'm just terrified and really, let's be honest, don't get last, Dusty. Don't get last, Ryan. Um, We can't do that and so really that was my main goal is just keep an eye on somebody rule one on the amazing race on the first leg when you're terrified just be with someone because i was confident we could win a foot race if need be which does play out um but really that's what i'm i was thinking and you know talking to ryan i would assume he's in the same boat like man i don't want to be the one to let this team down and i don't want to get last place and go home and deal with my friends ridiculing me how about you what are you thinking (laughs) standing there well, no, I mean, first and foremost, like, I think that is a theme of the amazing race. Do not be last, you know? So I'm just sitting there, one, having to pinch myself that this is actually even happening. I, I honestly don't think I believed it the whole the whole first leg. Um, but I, yeah, I'm just sizing everyone up. You know, you have Mike, uh, again, obviously, who ate Mo, like, massive, like, physical threats. Um Like you said, Lulu and Lala, they're matching, which I would like to address. A lot of people are like, why didn't you and Raquel like dress alike? I'm like, guys, this is a classic like tits and wits situation. I'm not going to wear a matching tracksuit next to her because I'm literally going to look like a 12 year old boy. (laughs) Not going to do it. Uh, Although I was like, damn, they do look pretty great. Um, Yeah. And then you have the Holdernesses, hot mom, hot dad. They look like they're straight up like from California, like plucked out of like the most beautiful people magazine. And then I see you two. I kind of thought you guys were like these like Boston rowing like douchebags, but I was like, God, they look so fast. And yeah, I'm just sizing myself up to every single person up there. And I'm like, dear God, just don't be last. But I mean, and I don't know if we touched base on it yet, but we actually ran into a couple people in the airport, which you saw. So, I mean, obviously lined up. That was when I was really sizing everyone up and down. But we ran into the Holdernesses and Sam and Connie at the airport. And, yeah, you know, you're hearing everyone's stories, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, what are, what are we doing on this season? Like, I'm literally just a normal flight attendant. And people even asked me. I think it was Natalia. She was like, oh, my God. Like, did you guys, like, save someone's lives on the plane? And I was like. No, I try to like go with the joke of like, oh yeah, we're like the psychic flight attendants. So we can tell when you're gonna miss your connection. Look outside. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. Outside, you know, we've landed a few planes when need be. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, no, like we literally are nobodies, you know. But so yeah, it was like really intimidating to know everyone's story, have everyone lined up, and then just like size everyone up and down. And again, I was just like, God, just please don't be last. Like, please. Biggest fear in the world. <laughs> that first leg, it's just get through and survive the dance. Oh, I know, but so yeah, I mean, first first thing, we had to do either Digibin or Artist Den. Why did you guys choose Digibin? So great question. And I'm going to, when you watch episode one, you're going to see our section where we read the clue. And it is very brief. And it's basically Ryan just stumbling over it out of breath. And the reason being is because we chose the art challenge first. And about 25 yards into our run, we realized our goals were one, to try to stay away from singing and dancing at all costs stay away from animals at all costs because those seem to be 
have problems. And if we were to go to a detour and we don't improve after one to two tries, it's switched to the other one. And so literally we broke one of our rules. I didn't want to be judged on something either. And so art yeah. and crafting, we realized our strength is physicality. This other choice, Digibin, is basically just running all over London, which very blessed that Ryan has been to London multiple times. So that made the decision easier. But my hat is off to Ryan. I owe him all the credit in the world for making that decision on the spot, talking me out of it immediately. And that's when we kind of made the decision to go the other way. And we saw a decent group of people running that way too. Not you guys ever, other than until the end, which we'll get to, but Spencer and Anthony were going that way. Ray and Kara looked like they were thinking about it until they switched. So it was just a, you know, we played to our strengths. Let's run. If we can run, that takes all the guesswork out of it. Because again, we are not from Harvard. We're not rowers. Um, I am not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'll tell you that, but I can run for days. And so <laughs> Ryan saved our tails on that. Thank God. Cause after seeing the episode in the flag thing, I would have been, I would have been covered in the flag by the end of it. Yeah. So that was really our reasoning. It was just play to our strength. Yeah. What well, about you guys? I believe you guys went the same route too. Cause we run into no. you. Yeah, no, honestly, we had the same kind of conversation of playing to our strengths, which we had been to London before. And I don't, consider myself artistically blessed by any means. So I was like, I, I know London. And, you know, if we could get a map, I'm like, I I'll pick a map over a boy. Like I can, I can go all over a map. So let's do that. You know, like, I don't, I don't, like you said, I don't want to be judged. And I also want to take a minute just for people listening who maybe weren't original, like watchers of the amazing race. There were a lot of people who are like, well, why didn't you guys have to do, like, we didn't see you guys do the the artist den. So that was a detour. So you pick one or the other. Um, so obviously you and I both picked the, the digi bin. And a detour, um, just so you guys know, both teammates have to compete in yes. the detour. Um, so you get an option, but both of you complete it. Whereas a roadblock, which will come into play later mm -hmm. is a very vague clue very vague that you read very. and you have to make a decision prior to reading the real clue. One person does it, no switching. So just for you guys who are new to tuning in, didn't mean to interrupt, but that should clarify for you guys. Yes. Cause it is confusing. It is, I, again, I've been watching the show since I was in middle school. So to me, it's like second knowledge, but I do see as like, Oh, like a new viewer, how, how it's kind of hard. Like, okay, we didn't see you slap up the painting. Like, you know, but, um, but no, on that with the Digibin, I'm so glad looking back because I, I definitely think that was the right choice. Um, but it's crazy how like your blinders are just on because rewatching the episode, when we're talking to the Bobby, yeah. Sherry and Akbar are right behind us. And like, everyone's like, oh my God, why didn't you go help them? Or why didn't you like tell them like, oh, it's right here. I was like, guys, like I literally did not see them. Like, I, like I was like a horse, you know, like I, we were focused on our own thing and I saw nobody, nobody until the end. That's where right. Who do I see peeking out of the little cab? Oh my gosh. Like, I don't know. I, I can only speak for myself here, but like. Again, I was pinching myself the whole entire time, like that this was actually happening, and I was kind of trying to go about the races, just have fun. Like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I am very competitive, but like I don't think it kicked in until who do I see cab to cab pulling up to the museum where we're running up to Phil, and for the first time, like that was where the race started for me I think because I was like oh my god this is about to be a foot race between the two boys that I said was the fastest like oh like oh it's like this like this is the amazing race you know and like I don't think that they appropriately like showed how hard some of this stuff is but Absolutely like not. I knew myself I was like oh my god like we can compete like you know so dude that was when the race started for me was when i saw you two in the cab next to us it put the punctuation um ryan and i spoke prior to the leg starting you know just feeling everyone out like who could be players i nabbed you guys as who could be trouble one you've you're traveled uh, just the brief amount that you get to communicate guys which is not much at all outside of racing uh, you guys just had charisma and you seemed that you had a bond very similar to ryan and i's and I'm a big proponent. If you can avoid arguing on The Amazing Race, you're going to have a lot better success. Um, you look at season after season, calm, cool, collected, at least sticking with your partner is a huge benefit. And so, um, you know, this leg, leg one, London, 
we got the butterflies out. Just to recap, uh, Spencer and Anthony, they did end up finishing first place. Um, we came in, Ryan and Dusty Team Gray, right behind them, literally a minute behind them, followed right behind closely, as you guys see at the end of the episode, behind Kayla and Raquel. So that rounded out our top three. Uh, unfortunately, 11 teams showed up, but one did have to go home at the end of this uh, leg one. It's our good friends, Mike and Mo, my boys that I met in the airport, one of the first teams I got to introduce myself to. So I was a bit heartbroken to lose one of my original three. But Kayla, what can you, what do you have to say or what are your thoughts on you know, Mike and Mo going out? Because both of us really thought they were challengers. Yeah, I mean, you and I both picked them out, had the same kind of thing of like, oh my gosh, they're a huge physical threat. Um, but that's just like what I love about the Amazing Race is like, I would have never guessed like going into leg one that they would be the first ones out. So, never. you know, it was it was kind of like a conflicting moment for me because on one hand, I was massively relieved going into leg two because I was like, oh my God, no way. You know, in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, this is this is great. But, you know, at the same time, like, there's just such incredible people and they do such wonderful things and I wanted them to be my friends. So I was like, oh, damn, like I wanted to get to know more, but also selfishly, I was like, all right, dude, that's just one more, uh, one more I don't have to worry about. Absolutely. Um, I really was just shocked though. Um, selfishly, like I, once I saw how close it was between them and Lulu and Lala, you know, I, I am all about that girl power kind of. So I was, again, very relieved that they made it through because- again girl power but yeah i know i i was just honestly just i was speechless i could not believe that it was them so again i love you guys mike and mo i think you guys had all of us laughing more than anyone else Absolutely it was a pleasure far. to get to know you and i hope i hope we'll be seeing more of you guys but but yeah i mean i was i was shook i, I love I you shook. Mike and Mo, you both were, like Kayla said, the life of the party while you were there. 100%. And really what you guys do for your community and shining a light on the police department and what you guys do for kids and how you interact with your community and all the things you do, it's truly beautiful. And if you guys follow them on social media, it's constantly amazing things happening. Mike's doing bodybuilding now, and if he gets any bigger, I'm terrified. And Mo constantly doing beautiful things with his church and if you guys didn't see the apps or they got the opportunity to sing at uh, a buffalo bills game a couple weeks ago yeah. i believe which is amazing they sing the national anthem and so yeah. they have bright things ahead they're going to keep impacting lives and we love you guys and uh i hate to say it better you than me <laughs> facts <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> So but we no. wrap we wrapped up with leg one. Uh, we got a taste. You know the butterflies are out. Uh, we know we can compete. We get into leg two. Oh man, uh, London okay. bright and I, early. I want to take this one over because I have to know how how did it feel <laughs> coming on to that double decker bus in London absolutely murking all of us we'll, we'll talk about the leg but i just want to address the obvious you guys wiped the floor with us you were a goddamn mob you get to the bus you find out you're first and it's just a continuation to glasgow like how like were you guys pissed like how pissed were you i can't say that i was thrilled when i made it to the double decker bus and Phil pulls out the yellow envelope from under the chair, which when you watch episode one, they don't really elaborate this until Lulu and Lala make it to the bus. Uh, and we didn't know it was a continuation. And so we're like licking our chops. We know we ran, I mean, the leg laid out perfectly for us. As you saw, darts, in my opinion, was the way to go. If you could get it done, it saved tons of time. It was very flawless, the leg, and our and one of the better legs we were on, in my opinion. And so to get there, to know you did everything you needed to do in a very timely manner and not get anything, it's devastating. But it's good to know that you still get to race and that you're not going home. But right afterwards, and it doesn't show it, Ryan, I mean, he is just <laughs> dumbfounded when he finds out we still have to go. I literally have to look at him like, bite your tongue, buddy. Let's we'll just get off the bus and live fight another day. Uh, <laughs> we felt a bit cheated because we, you know, it was just our day. And it, you know, we're alive. I can't complain. I still get to run with my buddy, but not what we were expecting at all. I, I was literally thinking money, which I'm all about. Just give me cash. I'll go make my own vacations. 
but they do such an amazing job offering trips. I was, I was down for that as well, but it is what it is. We got to, we got to survive. But other than that, the leg was pretty, pretty smooth sailing for us. I don't know about you guys. What are you know, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah. I mean, and I would like to just say it, it's not like you didn't get anything. You guys at least got two beers out of the deal. Okay. Um, if I would have looked back in hindsight, I would have picked that, but no, I do kind of want to touch on that again, another detour where you're picking between darts or decorating cakes. Um, and yeah, it's so easy to look back and be like, I wish I would have done darts. But reading that clue, I was like, you have to get two bullseyes back to back. I was like, I don't, I, we, I was like, we could be there all day. I could hit the bullseye, but if you didn't hit it in the same round, like that just seemed so scary to me. So if I, you watch I just, the YouTube video, the extra, so anyone out there, if you want some behind the scenes footage, follow Amazing Race on YouTube. It is yes. a three minute video of Ryan giving me every reason whatsoever to not throw darts. But again, episode one, leg one, he talked me out of doing art. This one, I knew I had in the bag. Like I said, I'm a dart slinging savage. We played in a garage, me and my wife, all of my friends growing up daily for hours. And so I knew eventually he would get one. And I felt pretty confident every time that I could hit one out of three bullseyes. And so huge benefit. But to be in London, to go to an old school bar, dart pub, where it all began, it was a no-brainer for me. And we did yeah. get some beers, which we finished after throwing darts that wasn't on there. Don't know if much they have, but I'm putting it out there. They were delicious. Okay, well, because let's also address Coach. You literally hear him go, do we have to drink these? Come on, Coach. I honestly expected more. Like, I would have not let those go on drink. Just saying. The beers are warm, um, too. I didn't believe it. And, you know, across the pond, they like their beers room temperature. That's I was going to say, it's a London thing. It's like yeah. a pub thing over there. I'm like, no. Warm beer's better than no beer. Fact, a hundred percent fact. Um, but no, you guys definitely picked the right one because um, the the wits part um, that I'm supposed to play did not come out. Um, I would like to address. I knew of Brexit. I just didn't know that like it had happened. Like I just didn't know that Britain had actually left. Again, this was like early 2020 when this was shot. And I'm getting a lot of like, oh, you guys are flight attendants. You're so well traveled. How did you not know that? Listen, I said I was well traveled. I didn't say I was like up to date on the news. I mean, you should Raquel be reading the such... encyclopedia when you're traveling. What do you mean? Like, what do you do? I was like, I don't know. And again, we weren't the only ones that messed that up. Um, but I will say after we messed up one, we flew through that second cake, but a hundred percent watching that back, the darts was the right call. So, I mean, I wish I, I could say we would go back and change it. You know, you can't hindsight's 2020. Um, but no, I, like I, we survived. That's, I mean, again, that's, uh, that was our theme was trying to have fun. Just don't be last, you know? So, and again, Lulu and Lala, uh, they got to keep going girl power. Love that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to, I kind of want to ask them like how they feel. Um, I think ideally we would love to bring some people onto this podcast and, you know, kind of talk and share with them like the experiences. So that's something to maybe look forward to in the future. Um, but Dusty touched on it a little bit, the YouTube, uh, videos on the amazing race YouTube channel. Uh, so we will definitely share the link to that because we'll, we'll kind of be addressing some of that later on in future podcasts, because there's so much content, you know, the show's only 45 minutes to an hour with commercials that, you know, they really don't have have time to show everything that we did so sometimes things that look so simple aka yeah, no, yeah. the clue <laughs> future reference if it's a clue it's probably because it's a clue that's right um <laughs> i mean it's, it's just it's so it's so much harder when you're in the moment you know but but yeah i mean so, anything you want to add not for leg. I mean, I feel like London, we came, we saw, we did what we needed to do. I feel like we got our toes wet. We had some decent finishes and I think we set the tone, both of our teams that, you know, we're players. And so again, I commend you two girls. You ran a hell of a first two legs and it was what? a good time competing against you. Um, yes. Let's get this thing. Let's wrap this puppy up. Why don't you close this out and uh, let's finish episode one. 
Yeah. So we want to thank you guys for listening. Um, again, if this is kind of the thing that you're into, Pit Stop Podcast, uh, we will try and do this every week, maybe throw in a couple extra ones here and there, depending on the topics we're allowed to talk about. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of want to just keep it humble. This has just been such an incredible experience, so I don't want to take that for granted. Um, so I will definitely allow myself to be brought back down to earth. And uh, what better way to do that than my dad sending me all the lovely fan mail that's out there. Uh, from from all you people watching and commenting behind your phone um so this one again sent to me by my father a guy named ray on facebook he said stop talking and just bring me my drink and bag of nuts so on that note i will stop talking we will see you very soon to talk about episode two which is leg three but we hope you guys you guys have enjoyed and yeah Hang out for the ride. (laughs) We can't wait, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See ya later.